Two days ago, Sony came out with a $2,000 prime lens, their new G Master 50mm f1.2. I don't know that they will ever send me that lens to review, but I figured I should offset that crazy expensive lens price by reviewing a $69 lens that I have right here. I was on Seven Artisans website just a couple of weeks ago. I saw this lens and I thought, well, that's weird. That would be kind of cool to review. So I emailed them and I said, hey, send one over. And they did. So here it is. And it looks more like a lens cap than an actual lens. So this is my review of the Seven Artisans UFO lens. So it comes in this plastic tub little box uh, that is see-through. It has a sticker on the front and a sticker with info on the back. You open it up and there is the lens. Now the lens comes with a rear lens cap that is larger than the lens itself. Uh, it's plastic, but we'll get to the lens here in a moment. Uh, really nothing else in here besides a little microfiber bag that's labeled Seven Artisans. So the lens itself is very compact and the design is certainly interesting. It weighs 49 grams or so. You can see just how thin it is. If you compare it side by side to a plastic lens cap, it is actually smaller than a lens cap, which is pretty crazy. I guess the center part does poke out a little bit more, but it is very slim, very compact. The lens is made out of no plastic that I can tell. It's all metal, has some glass elements. This lens is an 18 millimeter f6.3. It does not move from 6.3 because the inside of this lens does not have any sort of autofocus motor or mechanism and you cannot adjust your aperture whatsoever. So once you put this on the camera, it stays 6.3 the entire time. Now, interestingly, the inside of the lens does have some elements. There are six elements in four groups. Around the rear, you simply have a number, a red dot to let you know where to mount it and an E-mount. And then around the front, there is some interesting design choices here. You can see the Seven Artisans logo. It says UFO lens, 18 millimeter, 6.3. And then around the the entire lens you have some Roman numerals that imitate a clock face. Not sure what that has to do with the lens but mounting this lens onto my a6100 you can see again how slim and compact it is. There are two ways to evaluate a lens such as this one. You can go the serious route where you take this as an actual competitor in the market and you compare it to other manual lenses, maybe throw up a comparison with the Sigma 16 millimeter versus this 18 millimeter, in which case most of you would probably laugh at its performance, or you can look at it as a fun, quirky lens that's different and going to give you a different look, kind of along the same lines as those CCTV lenses that sell on Amazon for about 30 bucks. And they're unique, they're different, they offer some crazy distortions. Anyway, I took this lens with my a6100 and I shot a bunch of samples and I'll show you those. sample photos and this was an interesting one to use because I pulled up the sample images and I was surprised in a lot of the cases that 
everything seemed like it was in focus and the image quality wasn't as terrible as I expected it to be. Now you have to be far away from this lens. I would say six feet plus for everything to be in focus because I found that closer subjects did get very blurry. So again, six feet or more, you're kind of in the safe zone for this lens and you really need bright outdoor sunlight to capture anything with decent sharpness. I tried a couple of shots in low light and they turned out to be pretty terrible, blurry because of the motion as well. Again, this lens is neither on that end of toyish where it's like none of the shots are usable, nor is it on the other side where it's everything's usable. It's kind of in the middle. It's like, it's a little bit of fun and a little bit of serious combined into one lens. Now this lens does have some distortion. Flaring is especially noticeable because this front lens element is just exposed to sunlight and you wouldn't really use any sort of lens hood with it either because it would look ridiculous. Although I suppose you could put like a tiny lens hood on it. That would be kind of weird. Barrel distortion is not super noticeable with this lens, which is good. However, there is quite a bit of vignetting in the corners, even again on an APS-C size sensor, which is what this lens is intended for. So at the end of the day, I think that this lens is more of a novelty item, maybe something that you get your photographer friend for a birthday present when you can't think of anything else or maybe it's a fun lens that you give your kids if you want to let them borrow your camera and use it for some random photos around the house. Ultimately, it's not really sharp enough for me to recommend it uh, for you to use as an actual lens or to record yourself with because there are several other manual focused lenses, even from Seven Artisans, that I think are better options. And it's not really funky enough for me to be like, oh, well, this is a very unique lens and I've never seen anything like it. And the results you can only get with this UFO lens. This is kind of that middle line lens where it's hard to recommend for either buyer. It is available from their website from Amazon for about $69 and it does go on sale every once in a while. So definitely check on pricing. I've seen this thing down to 50 or $59 or so. Um, it is an interesting lens though. I have to hand it to Seven Artisans. I like that they are taking risks and they are creating lenses that I would have never come up with. I mean, who would have thought of a UFO shaped lens that's just basically a lens cap but still has six lens elements inside of it. Pretty cool. Anyway, that is my review of the UFO lens from Seven Artisans. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something. As always, thank you so much for all of your comments, all of your likes and your support. Thank you and have a great day. Bye-bye.